Hey guys, so this is Andrea, welcome back to the channel. So, was doing a bit of research and read an article that was posted on Facebook by The Economist and saw someone really ripping into them about language. And um, I've touched on this before, but I want to touch on it again because the internet is such a diverse place and it is essentially without borders. Um, guys, but that being said, I wanted to touch on something that there's some trends that I'm seeing being an internet creator as well as my channel Woohoo! Gain subscribers, so please guys like, share, subscribe, comment, um, it really does help the channel grow. That is that some words in some cultures are offensive and some aren't and I think we need to remember that. And in a disability context, we've got words that we know, regardless of where you are located in the country, are unacceptable. Um, these being the R slur and stuff like that. But what I wanted to touch on is ones that are actually still used as clinical terms. And they are starting to be reclaimed in Australia. Um, this word is high functioning. So high functioning in Australia actually describes someone with a disability that is essentially high functioning. They are able to fit into social situations. It does not mean that they are not disabled, especially if they have what the NDIS and the Australian community considers a psychosocial disability. So this being ADHD, autism, a brain injury, and I'm still aware that there's a bit of a fight for ADHD to be listed as a primary and not a secondary disability on the NDIS. But this more is around the wording than the NDIS technical jargon. So guys, that's the thing that we need to remember that when talking about disability, go to the disability community first because the disability community for so long has been talked to and dictated to essentially. Um, language policing is the first step in tyranny, guys. So, and we're starting to see it more and more because, guys, um, I'd recommend, and I'll put links down below, check it out at your local library. If you have the bandwidth over the holidays, have a read of Ekman in Jerusalem. Have a read of the Gulag Archipelago. They all saw the warning signs but didn't speak up. And that's why I've done the videos of speaking up to service providers and why I feel the need to speak up about person-centered language. And go to your local disability advocate. Go to your local public speaker. And don't expect them to work free. I'm going to say that louder for the people in the back who didn't hear it the first time. Don't expect them to work for free. Um, do not also, do not expect them to work for exposure. Uh, a, pay them the public speaking fee. Don't assume that they're on the pension as well. There are a lot of people who make a full-time job public speaking about disability and disability advocacy and accessibility issues especially if they have a physical disability but this is where we need to remember that we have such an international audience and remembering that the person who is scripting writing the videos recording the videos will be talking from their possibly their own lived experience and their viewpoint and their culture. Um, this is where I want to get into cultural appropriation. And this one's a tricky one, guys, because it's disability culture is a very diverse culture because anyone from any culture around the world can become disabled at any time. See, only minority group that you can join at any time through no fault of your own and um, they are the most marginalized group in history we actually don't have accurate numbers on during the second world war how many people 
with a disability were subject to unfair experiments, to ster forced sterilisation, and even to this day in developing countries um, who are forced into institutionalised settings. In Australia, there's actually a push for those institutionalised settings to be removed and broken down. But that's a whole other video. So what I'm trying to get at is, guys, words do matter. Yes. And how you're using those words do matter. And they can break someone's spirit. But if you're talking to someone with a disability and you are questioning how to refer to them, I do recommend using their name. So use their name. Um, if you're a support worker, uh, you have to put it in their notes. I know that there's now a push with high functioning clients to do notes with them. Um, this can be a bit tricky because of what you need to put into them and privacy concerns and stuff like that. But if you know that they're good at writing, they're good at recording, it might be a good idea and then you get the communication going around their goals, their wants, their needs as well. But we're starting to see, especially coming up to Christmas and COVID starting to let rip in Australia, that there are some service providers that are slipping back into the medical model. So it is on the disabled community to essentially keep them accountable. Um, not have people treat you like a number. And so that's the thing. When you're being language policing, you can miss the bigger picture. Uh, the bigger pi picture is that people with disability are still a very marginalised group. They're still a very at-risk group. I did the video of what is a vulnerable adult or a vulnerable person, guys. And this, again, is a very nebulous term, but it is a term that people do take offence to, but it is accurate. So it's an adjective to describe someone who can be, through the system or through their circumstances, are put in a vulnerable situation. It does not victim blame them for their situation, but by giving them the language and the tools that they need to remove themselves from bad situation or to speak up to get people to advocate for them, this is where person-centered language has its power because it then removes the person from what they're thinking and how people would think about them. Right. Um, it's a really topic that I could go on about for hours, but in closing, I want to say that if you're working with a disabled person, identify as a person with a disability. It's up to you how you identify, but please don't language police those who feel comfortable using the words high functioning, special needs, disabled, because you don't feel comfortable with them. There is room at the table for everyone, and that's what makes democracy and the table, especially coming up to Christmas, so exciting. I'm excited to hear from different points of view as the channel moves and I get some guests on and stuff like that. But what I'm running into is a lot of people are afraid to speak up or afraid of coming on the record because of they don't know what words to use. So I hope this one helps in that just take your brain with you. Use your common sense. Um, and especially non-verbal or the other one being complex needs is one that people do take offence to but it's not describing them. So what other words are we going to use? Because words have meaning and when you assign a different meaning to the same word you start manipulating language to your own ends. And Guys, um, I encourage you to pick up the books that I've listed from your local library um, about how people throughout history were able to manipulate language to get good 
people to do exceedingly horrible things to minority populations, guys. Um, I know it's a very difficult and challenging subject to read about and to educate yourself on, but we need to be aware of this to prevent it from happening. And to understand that those who don't understand history are doomed to repeat it. And in fact, there are some people who are fighting against compelled speech, compelled speech laws as well, and the protection of minors and vulnerable adults as well. And so freedom of speech does not mean freedom from consequences as well. Um, I know basically in every OCDC country, there is limitations on free speech and I encourage you to read up and respect them because there's actually been a few court cases in Australia where people have actually got caught out by our free speech laws as well and even our, in, um, our internet bullying laws we and I will do another video on internet um, disability and the digital divide as well because I want to touch on Dolly Streamlords but guys this video is already about 11 20 minutes long um, at first recording so guys please again like share subscribe leave your comments below about how do you refer to yourself if you're a person with a disability um, what words are you in the process of reclaiming